Now, let's turn our attentions instead to Deanne Fitzpatrick, a government worker in Scotland who reported a culture of misogynistic bullying in her office and was allegedly tied to a chair and gagged by her colleagues as revenge for blowing the whistle, as this shocking picture released this week shows. Miss Fitzpatrick was allegedly told, this is what you get when you speak out against the boys. Because what better way to avenge an accusation of misogynistic bullying than with some misogynistic bullying? Jodie Pask, one of the accused, told the BBC, these are false allegations. I cannot remember the event you mentioned, but if it did happen, it would have been office banter. No, mate, office banter's funny. It's the only thing that keeps the corporate slave from the brink of insanity, really. I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter to me. I live in a metropolitan life, working in the media, earning millions and only working Fridays and taking lunch breaks longer than a whale's cock. But for everyone else like you, the lowly minions just cogs in a machine, office banter is so essential to mental health that it should be made available on the NHS, where in emergencies, you call up and they send around the entire cast of a question of sport to your workplace. <laughs> Some people think banter is an art. It's not. It's actually a science but also it's an art too. A great piece of office banter is both clever and stupid, and it neither physically or psychologically harms anyone. You know the sort of thing. In its simplest form, it's sending the new boy to find some tartan paint, or to go and ask someone for a long wait. But it can be much more sophisticated than that. Like the time my mate Phil started a new job at a printing company in the 80s, and at lunchtime on his first day, they pinned him to a desk, and they started all chanting, Brian, Brian, Brian. And then suddenly, this big bloke came out of a cupboard with his huge penis in his hands and moved it within millimetres of Phil's face until Phil was almost crying, at which point they revealed it was all a big joke and he didn't actually have to fillet a complete stranger in front of everyone. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That sounds like inflicting exactly the kind of physical and psychological trauma I objected to just about 30 seconds ago. And that's what Phil thought too, for 24 hours. By which point, he was holding another new boy down on a desk and chanting, Brian, Brian, Brian. The trauma that had been inflicted on him the day before was no longer trauma. It was bonding. Getting workplace banter right <laughs> is a tricky business. So let's defer to the experts in doing it properly. The great British builder, who aren't allowed in offices because they're too working class, have loud voices, and think the alphabet is a mad alien hieroglyph like in Stargate. Let's take a look at some of their epic bants. Lovely stuff. Um, Susie, being taped to a chair isn't all that bad, is it? Sometimes it's the only way we get our special guests to stay for the whole interview. <laughs> um, did you think it was awful or all right? I thought it was a, a crime, Sam. I thought it was physical assault and uh, something that should have come out a bit sooner. It only came out because there was a, a whistleblower within the mm. team of banter experts who did yeah. it. Mm. Um, but you've got to have a bit of light-heartedness in the office. That's obviously not a light-hearted office. It's about knowing where the line is, That's isn't it? Like, don't tape someone to a chair. The deal with comedy is that you're always supposed to be punching up, but of course, within a workplace, there's a very specific mm. hierarchy and you're not going to be able to bant yeah. upwards because mm. they'll fire you. Up yeah. so, up so that's yeah. the problem when you're trying to do it in the workplace is you can only bant down. And like you said in your package, there's this cycle of bants and it's time to break the cycle of bants. Let's talk about builders. How do you behave when you've got a builder in the house? I like to uh, pretend I've got important work to do and hide in the toilet. I used to try to sort of, I'd be like, <laughs> all right, yeah, all right, <laughs> like that. It was just, and they could see through it. And, but now, <laughs> now I can't, right? Because because I've They're turned punished. vegan. Oh, yeah. So when oh, a builder God. comes round uh, and I sort of say, you know, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, yes, please, mate. I'm like, okay, we've only got hippie milk. I'm sorry, we're watery people, and we've only got so much. Would you not even? You are, are you so vegan that you wouldn't even buy some normal milk just to kind of? No, not really. You literally wouldn't even buy some. 
No, not even to avoid the banter. Why are you a vegan? <laughs> oh, dude, how long has this show been? Yeah, this yeah. is a good subject. Let's, yeah, let's, let's start, definitely yeah. talk oh, about yeah, that, because if there's one thing non-vegans love, it's a conversation yeah. about veganism. Let's it's um, bully Jake about yeah, veganism. <laughs> and, and banter it's, the shit out yeah. of him. Really and, and well, but you wouldn't want him to hide in the loo as a vegan, because they do get... They make quite a lot of smells, vegans. I'm sorry, they do. A actually, your poo smells worse than mine. No, you this, is, like. this is a delightful and yeah. erudite news-based conversation, <laughs> if you've just joined us. Can I go somewhere else? Uh, you absolutely Balloon. can. No one would blame you if you left now. I may too. For now, thank you, panel.